in June. It's about pride. Being able to live in my full truth. Proud to be bold. You don't believe in love? What do you believe in? Proud to be true. I am happy like this. Proud to be you. I need to be seen for who I am. A celebration of truth, love, progress, and the fight for it all. We work every day to make sure that our families are taken care of. Pride may be a party now, but it was born out of oppression. <laughs> this country's come a long way pretty fast, but there are new fights. Trans equality now. We celebrate pride to show how far the community's come, to keep the fight alive, and to remind anyone who doubts. You have a purpose. You matter. Be you. You're okay. Happy Pride, I'm Evan Millward. June's almost over, so we wanted to spend the next 30 minutes keeping conversation going to highlight the progress we've made and are still fighting for. June is joyful, but it is a reminder too that pride comes from pain. Pride started with a riot when people decided to be bold. Why do we celebrate pride in June? 52 years ago this week at the Stonewall Inn in New York City, police raided it like they had countless times before, but this time, black trans women, drag queens, gays, lesbians, and bisexuals said enough and fought back against the police. This is widely considered the tipping point in the fight for gay rights. Cincinnati's first pride happened four years later in April 1973 on Fountain Square. Cincinnati is like, like, it was like an old secret society. Maybe you're right, maybe you're right. It's sure grown, and it's moved to Northside. Oh, fabulous! Get used to it! Yay! To Clifton and back. And for a brief moment, since he shined with a human rights ordinance on the books. The measure passes, and we'll take a five minute recess. But it wouldn't last. Pride was in short supply in the 90s. In the wording of, of the amendment, specifically removes gay men, lesbians, and bisexuals from ever being able to petition the government for cases of discrimination. Voters approved Article 12 in 93. After it passed, the community was so demoralized. It took half a decade for pride to be on display again. It was a celebration of diversity right down Clifton Avenue. Voters repealed Article 12 in 2004, and the momentum has continued. Oh, it's a sea change. Wouldn't you know it, the national fight cuts right through Cincinnati. Doesn't it always? Our love is equal. It was two Bearcats who came back to town, Jim Obergefell and John Arthur, whose pledge, till death do us part, led to same-sex marriage nationwide. And in that very first hearing in federal district court, the city, the city attorney stood up in court and said, Your Honor, we agree with John and Jim. Their marriage deserves to be recognized. The Supreme Court ruling came down hip, hip. one day before our pride parade in 2015. Jim Obergefell right up front. I have some very personal, very, very unique to me moments. Oh, how times have changed. When Cincinnati really became this welcoming, supportive place. The fight for rights is now focused on the T in LGBTQIA+. Transgender people find themselves up against state governments nationwide, including Ohio. Just last week, representatives added a ban on trans girls playing girls sports into another bill that was sure to pass. Governor Mike DeWine disagreed with the move. What's hurtful to me? The legislation and attacking trans kids in different states right now. Um, especially around sports and being able to play sports. And um, I think it's hurtful to see we will have articles about how accepting we are of marriage equality and fail to look at the fact that some of our most marginalized are being left out. Kentucky and Indiana have both toyed with banning doctors from giving gender affirming care or surgery to minors just this year. The words we use are especially powerful. Language defines who we are. Kristen Hartman is taking you to school to explain some of the terms you've probably seen and heard this month, but might not really know. Let me introduce you to our word guides. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Dr. Sarah Pickles specializes in family and community medicine at UC. My pronouns are they, them, there. Tristan Vaught works with school districts on equity, inclusion, and belonging. Back to their pronouns in a moment. First, the acronym LGBTQIA+. 
the letters stand for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, or queer, no longer a slur. Queer has um, really been reclaimed by the LGBTQ community and, and um, as a term of empowerment. I is for intersex, A is for asexual, advocate, or ally, and plus is to represent anyone else. The IA plus, new to me, so are the three terms we're covering here next. Cisgender, the prefix cis is Latin for on the side of. Cisgender, um, CIS just means same, so same gender. You were assigned a gender at birth and uh -huh. you still identify with that assigned. I was assigned female and I identify as a woman. So I'm cisgender. So you're cisgender, yeah. Okay, and so am I also heterosexual? Why, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's my learning curve. You can be straight or not and cisgender. Next up, pansexual. It does not mean that I'm attracted to pots and pans. It actually <laughs> pushes against the term bisexual because bi means binary. A person who identifies as pansexual might be attracted to many different gender identities or all gender identities. And if binary means two parts, binary sex systems, male and female, binary genders, man and woman. What does non-binary mean? So non-binary is that I don't feel like I'm a man or a woman. Um, I'm kind of in the middle. Yeah. I'm very close to being a trans man, but I'm in that okay. non-binary space. And what were you assigned when you were born? Uh, my assigned sex was female. Which explains Tristan's pronouns. They, them, their. The dictionary says they, them is a singular word. If there was an umbrella sitting here, we would say, oh, somebody left their umbrella. Did multiple people leave their umbrella? No, one person left their umbrella. I get people that go, oh, this is just too hard for me to learn all these pronouns. You know what else is hard? Names. Language is really powerful. Language um, is a cultural phenomenon, but it's a way to show respect. I need okay. to be seen for who I am. Day. videos like this and the whole coming out process are just not necessary um, but until then you know I'm gonna do my best and do my part to cultivate a culture that's accepting that's compassionate and this Pride Month an active NFL player being true and bold Carl Nassib came out as gay with that message to fans just last week sports is sometimes considered the last frontier for the LGBTQ community Jack Brennan worked for the Bengals for more than 20 years and hid for that whole time what he calls his queer self Tanya O'Rourke joins us. Tanya, you've known Jack for years. He kept this part of his life very private. Oh, yes. He, you know, I've known Jack Brennan professionally for decades. He was the guy I called to interview Marvin Lewis or Andy Dalton. He waited until he retired to come out. And for the very first time on television, he is showing himself both sides of himself to you. Didn't know. Well, nobody did. I felt like I had to be really closeted about everything, particularly working in the sports field and being in the locker room all the time. Jack Brennan had been harboring his secret nearly his whole life. He tells me he was not quite four years old and at a friend's house when he first remembers wanting to wear girls clothes. I just was possessed with the urge. I wanted to wear her cute little blouse. So we traded tops. Right then in my little old self, I knew uh, something was there. Did it take a while to get used to walking in heels? Oh, well, yeah, but I've been doing it for 40 years. This is Jack in women's clothing. He says he's queer, but not gay. Queer, by the way, is now an umbrella term to describe people who find labels like lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender inaccurate or restrictive. I am a cross-dresser. The simple definition of cross-dresser, I think, is uh, someone who finds uh, excitement and satisfaction in wearing the clothes of the opposite gender. I do not feel I was born in the wrong body. Jack is married to Valerie and has been for 48 years. They have three kids, so you're wondering, what was her reaction to all of this? It wasn't very long after we got married before Jack uh, sprung uh, a makeup face on me and I went, that was bananas. <laughs> <laughs> that was on our honeymoon. Leading up to the wedding, 
It was like, still I felt like I couldn't tell anybody. I couldn't tell a, a single soul in the whole world. So your reaction was what most people's reaction would probably be. Yes, I You're think so. I just was, what are you doing? Valerie says she was angry at first, sometimes even jealous. Over time, she grew to accept it. As for Jack, you seem happy like this. Uh, I am happy like this. I get a big kick out of it. It's very exciting. And I feel, uh, especially as time has gone on, I feel affirmed, you know, this is part of who I am. So yeah, I feel happy. If I didn't, why would I go to all this trouble? It took 50 years for Jack Brennan to come out, so he knows it's hard to do, but says if you can find the courage, being transparent is worth it. I know I'm not a girl, but I like to play as one. Sometimes it just feels really good to be dressed like a girl. Well, Jack has written a book on his life and experiences as a cross-dresser and someone who hid that while working in the NFL. Won't let you know when it gets published. For now, be bold, be true, be you. Being true with doctors and nurses is still hard. There is stigma and discrimination. The AIDS crisis of the 80s and 90s made finding appropriate health care almost impossible. You are worthy of health. Homophobia, transphobia makes us feel unworthy. We'll show you some changes in our healthcare systems and the services available so you can get the best medical care no matter how you identify. Welcome back. You know, we've talked about words, but so much is made about LGBTQ people's bodies. Many say they feel unseen in healthcare, sometimes calling it uncomfortable, discriminatory even. Kristen Hartman shows us local strides being made toward affirming, compassionate medical care. Hey there, Hi. I'm Dr. Pickle. Nice, nice to meet nice you. To meet you. My pronouns are she, hers. What are yours? I use he or they. In the interest of transparency, this is a redo on a doctor visit that had already happened at UC Health Services. Privacy concerns prevented us from sitting in on the actual appointment. I want um, a deeper voice. I want facial hair. What you see is what patient Zach Ryan Statler was willing to share for the camera, which is a lot. Zach is transgender, and this is not a discussion of what that means. What's in your pants? And it, that's a creepy question to ask. Would you ask anyone else that? The answer is no, but we are trying to understand how health care might be harder for the LGBTQIA plus community. I've experienced discrimination, absolutely. Some of that might be lack of training. Medical schools now, the average of all LGBTQ curriculum is about four hours. It's why Dr. Sarah Pickle works with residents to educate them beyond that. Respect, um, I mean, love, compassion. That takes affirmation. New patient paperwork at University of Cincinnati Health Services asks you about things like your pronouns and your gender identity. Is this where affirming starts? It does. I mean, it starts from the moment they walk in the door. It also takes understanding. One reason Dr. Pickle is on a team working on a simulation like this one. Stay close to me. That man is local. If I had a car, I wouldn't have to deal with these idiots. Set to launch next year, it will focus on the experiences of a transgender person within and outside of health care. It has to start with training. To understand the social progress, you have to see where this country was three or four decades ago. Back then, much of the community's health care talk was about HIV and AIDS, creating a culture of fear and shame, as it was often called a gay man's disease something you still sometimes hear. It's not only not fair, it's just really inaccurate. <laughs> to be clear, HIV cuts across the population now. Tim M. West, who's gay, has lived a version of the journey. He was diagnosed in 1999. At the time, they didn't have advanced language, so this doctor told me that I had full-blown AIDS. So it was pretty scary. It prompted a search for more. <laughs> Tim M. found a black gay doctor who he identified with. He says the compassionate, connected care impacted his attitude and therefore his health in a good way. The whole experience taught him the importance of creating an environment where culturally you feel at home. And is that what Equitas offers? 
That is. Equitas Health opened its doors in Cincinnati in 2019. The LGBT community has been really disproportionately affected by poor access to health care. Dr. Shanna Stryker says bad experiences can cause people to avoid care, and that can mean worse health outcomes. So Equitas offers a safe place where LGBTQIA patients find comprehensive care, including a pharmacy that caters to everything from high blood pressure to transgender hormones. Oh my God, it's. The coordination of care is so important because the amount of uh, homophobia and transphobia in our larger society is so strong. And memories live large. Julia Applegate, who is a lesbian. All through my prime fertility years, I was never asked if I wanted to be a parent. Not once. Wondered if her look prevented that conversation back when. Today, she likes to think it would happen because of strides in affirming care which brings us back to patients like Zach. When I started coming for treatment, I was in a much different place, a much darker place. Medical transition has saved my life, and Dr. Pickle has been a huge part of that. So much happening at UC, at Equitas Health, which has grown to about 2,000 patients, and at Cincinnati Children's. It is home to a transgender health clinic with care for young people ages 5 to 24. All of these developments in recent years led Dr. Pickle to call Cincinnati a burgeoning zone for LGBTQIA plus care in the Midwest. It is unsurpassed as a, a global icon in terms of something that stands for hope and diversity. The gay pride flag, many colors, many varieties, will show you what they all mean. And the gay bar, not just a place to drink and dance, why some call it a sanctuary. Now let's talk a little about maybe the most iconic symbol of pride. You've seen the rainbow flag, but just like our community, there are different colors, shades, designs, all of them unique. Let's start with this. This flag, now in a museum, debuted in 1978 by artist Gilbert Baker. It incorporated eight different colors, all with different meanings. Hot pink for sex, red for life, orange, healing, yellow, sunlight, green, nature, turquoise for magic, indigo for serenity, and violet for spirit. In 1979, the flag went down to six colors, with indigo and turquoise changed to blue that stood for harmony. This is the most iconic flag you see now. Through the years, though, there have been some changes to better represent different groups of people. In 1999, the transgender pride flag was designed with white, pink, and blue stripes. And in 2018, we got the progress pride flag. It's a combination of the traditional one, the trans pride flag, and adds black and brown stripes to represent marginalized LGBTQ plus communities of color, community members lost to HIV AIDS, and those currently living with the disease. The gay bar can mean a lot of different things for people in the LGBTQ community. For some, it's a sanctuary, the only place to be authentically you. One of the newest gay bars in our area is E19 in OTR. It's GM, calls it gay owned, gay operated, straight friendly. You can be whoever you want to be here. And I think that's a really beautiful thing because I don't think a lot of the people in our community feel like they can really be themselves in other spaces. You have to understand when I'm not welcome somewhere, I create my own. And that's what they've done. That's Pastor Leslie Jones. Her Truth and Destiny Church is all inclusive and she's been known to worship in gay bars. When I can walk down the street with my partner in one hand and my daughter in the other hand and feel safe, that no one's going to do a hate crime against me or hurt my child um, or hurt my partner or hurt all of us, then I would say then the, work's, the work is done. And no one's in this alone. Greater Cincinnati has more resources than ever for LGBTQ kids and adults to be true. We'll show some off and show you the work still being done. It is hard growing up LGBTQ. You can feel alone, hated, even by those you love. Lucy May's talking to advocates who say we're becoming a hotbed here for resources, but there is still work to do. Suicide, addiction, um, sexual abuse, domestic abuse, pretty much the gamut. Those are the traumas Ryan Joseph Allen and his friends experienced in their youth and the reasons they started the nonprofit Love Must Win in 2015. We were thinking, oh my goodness, what would have helped us when we were growing up? 
when we were teenagers um, with all the problems that we had. Love Must Win has programs ranging from drug and alcohol recovery to showing kindness through heart-shaped notes and heartfelt hugs. There's definitely, you know, a need for so much in the LGBT community. It's really exploded. Renee Avia is chair of Glisten Greater Cincinnati, which has provided support for LGBTQ youth in the region since 1995. She says resources in the tri-state have grown dramatically since then. I feel like now that folks are recognizing and being able to say, here I am, this is who I am, um, there's much more support for for all of the um, folks in our community. But she and Alan agree that the work to support Greater Cincinnati's LGBTQ youth and adults is far from complete. When I can walk down the street with my partner in one hand and my daughter in the other hand and feel safe, that no one's going to do a hate crime against me or hurt my child um, or hurt my partner or hurt all of us, then I would say then the work, the work is done. I think all the stuff he does is really important because like he helps people his organization helps people when, in, in their difficult times when they need help. It doesn't matter what you believe in, but everyone believes in love. And if not, then I would really reevaluate your heart. If you don't believe in love, what do you believe in? Lucy May, WCPO 9 News. And we've just scratched the surface. We've got more stories and resources on WCPO.com slash pride. But from all of us, thank you for spending this time with us talking about issues that are important now and every month of the year. We'll keep telling these stories too. Remember, be bold. Be true, be you, you matter. Good night.